They figured out the leading cause for dry skin, towels. So this morning we get a chance to get in the Word, and we're going to be in 2 Kings chapter 13. God is on the move, amen? amen. He, he wants to continue to speak in and through our lives, get this time to stir up our, our hearts for the things of God, to praise Him and thank Him for His goodness. My family and I have been in Arizona for almost two years, but we come from here, so we're, we're part of you guys. We're part of this community, amen? We've been on a little journey for the last two months through Montana and Wyoming and Idaho and Utah and Eastern Oregon, fishing and construction and four horses and two dogs and two kids and a horse trailer and a truck. And sometimes I even get to sleep in the horse trailer and not outside, but um, when, my mar when my wife lets me. Um. But we've been on a journey and a couple months, three months ago, Dave asked for me, Dave Prince asked me to teach and I'm more of the guy if you ask me to teach like, next week would be good. Three months, I'm like, woo, we got a lot to talk about. But I'm going to try to keep it bite-sized today. So um, let's get into the text. This is in 2 Kings 13, verse 14. We'll pick it up. As we're making our way there, a couple mornings ago, I was preparing for this and trying to pray it all down and boil it out so we could have our talk. And I walked outside. I was going to have a morning Bible study with my wife and kids. And I walked out and they said, hey, we're, we're in First Peter talking about our inheritance from the Lord. And in First Peter, he's talking about a heavenly inheritance. And did anybody know we have a heavenly inheritance? Come on, we got some heaven waiting for us, amen? But you know, can you get this down just a touch, sorry, this is feedback. On. You know you don't get your inheritance when you die. You know when you're going to die? Uh, as Christians, you don't get to die anymore, amen? Can I get an amen? Because in John chapter 11, Jesus talking to Martha and Mary, he says, I am the life and the resurrection. If you believe in me, you will never die. And then he asks them a Greek question, do you believe this? And then he raises Lazarus from the dead to prove like, we're not going to die anymore. Eternal life started for you, for you at salvation, amen? amen. We're, we're, we're eternal. We, we don't have, death no longer has sting. The grave no longer has any victory. So you don't receive your inheritance when you die because you're not going to die again. You've died in Christ. You're a new cre creature. All things are made new and now you're eternal. Amen? And what Paul talks about, this body is going to be swallowed up. This mortality will be swallowed up by life. That's what's really going to happen when we put off this tent and put on the glory of God. As I was talking to my wife and kids, we don't get our inheritance when we die. We get, we've already gotten our inheritance. And Ephesians would tell us we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. Amen? Like there's an already positional, I'm not going to get into too much of your theology and stuff, but it, like you, you're already positionally in Christ and you've been given some great and precious promises for eternity, but also now. Anybody have any promises from God in your life? This is your promise book. If you don't have promises, you need to get back in the promise book. Amen? He will keep you at perfect peace. Promise. Amen? You're more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens you. Amen? Like, He has given you incredible promises of joy that would be your strength. The peace of God that would rule your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. You have promises from God that He came to give you life and it more abundantly. You have these incredible promises and, and you are the most blessed people on the planet. Amen. You have eternity before you. The, the grave has lost its sting. You've been given promises from the God of the universe. You have the Spirit of God that dwells in you. You live in America. You're top 1% top of the world's population of wealth. You're the wealthiest people on the planet. You have the kingdom. You have the body. You and I are the most blessed people on the planet. Amen? And, and, and amen. So we can enjoy that practice. But, but uh, 
My, 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 my word today is respond to the promise. And in that, my hope is that we don't miss the promise. So let's get into the text. In 1 Kings chapter 13, verse 14, it says, Now Elisha was fallen sick of a sickness wherein he would die. And Joash, the king of Israel, came down unto him and wept over him, over his face, and said, O father, my father, the chariot of Israel, the horsemen thereof. And Elisha said unto him, Take your arrow and your bow. And he took his bow and his arrow. And the king put his hand, uh, or the king took his bow, and, it, and Elisha put his hand on the king's hand and said, Open up the window. And then he opened it. And Elijah said, shoot the arrow. So he shot it. Okay, what the picture here. The king of Israel is getting ready to lose the prophet. And he's got an army coming against him. So he comes down. Elisha's on his bed, dying of a sickness that will lead to his death. And Elisha says, okay, here's the deal. You're like, I know, you just read it. But take your bow and open the arrow, open the window and shoot your arrow out the window. And Elisha gets behind him and holds it as a, as a, as a mantle, as a position of, of blessing him. And so he, he's going to get a promise now. As he moves into this position, he's going to get a promise. Listen to the promise. The arrow of the Lord, the uh, arrow of the Lord's deliverance, the arrow of deliverance from Syria. For thou shalt smite the Syrians in Aphek till thou hast consumed them. He just got a promise. Anybody want a promise for total victory? Hey, man, he just got the promise. You are going to defeat your enemies. Your enemies are going to be defeated by you. Total victory. And then Elisha says, okay, now take the arrows out of your quiver. The king is meditating on the promise he just received, amen? Like, you just received total victory over your enemy. And he says, okay, now take your arrows and smite them on the ground. Tap your arrows on the ground, and he says, tap, tap, tap. He was given no direction. Just tap your arrows on the ground. And he tap, tap, tap. And Elijah this guy who's getting ready to, to pass away gets angry with him. The Bible says he is very angry with the king. and says, you should have smote them five or six times and you would have had complete victory. But because you smote them three times on the ground, you will get three victories and then you will be destroyed by your enemy. You're like, wait, wait, wait. He's already got a promise. He's got a promise. He's going to take that promise to the bank. Amen. He's like, yes and amen in Christ. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus, right? If you have the premise to the promise, yes. But if you don't have the premise that fulfills the promise, you will miss out on the promise God has given you. You're like, I don't know if that's true in the Bible. Let's talk about these people called Israel. They're in Egypt for 400 years, and God's going to lead them out to a place called the promised land. The promised land. Did they miss out on their promise? Oh, so you can miss out on your promises, amen? Amen. When you go out in fear and start murmuring and complaining and not walking in the promises, and guess what? You don't get the promises. The king's response to the promise determined how much of the promise he was going to get. Woo, that'll preach. But uh, that transforms my life, and I hope it gets a hold of you as we dig into this for a minute. Billy Graham said this, the sin of the American church is listening to sermons. Jesus says, don't be a hearer only, but a doer of the word. We, we could come in here and, and fool ourselves by hearing a good sermon and patting ourselves on the back and not responding and therefore not receiving and walking in the promise or the, the word of the Lord for our lives. Anybody ever done that? Nobody. Okay, I'm the only one. 
We need a new group of people I can talk to. So I need some people that have faults and failures and don't always just measure up. And just they're, 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 There's times where you're like, I'm not going to tap in. I'm ready to tap out. Anybody ready to tap out on some relationships, on some politics, on some church stuff, on some religiosity? Anybody ready to tap out at times? You're like, I'm done. Anybody ready to tap out on marriages and kids and stuff and struggles? And, and you just get weary and you get tired of tapping, tapping, tapping. But see, he wasn't told how many times to tap. That was up to him to decide. You get to decide how you're going to respond to the promises of God in your life. And your response will determine how much joy you have. Anybody lack joy? No. The Bible says rejoice in the Lord sometimes. And I'm like, good to go. Wait, it says always. And I'm like, not so good to go anymore. Rejoice in the Lord always. Pray without ceasing and everything. Give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Take every thought captive. Make it be obedient to Christ. Those are your weapons of your warfare. They're not carnal but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Anyway, you go into this this reality of of Philippians telling us that if you'll think about whatever is true and admirable and worthy, that the God of peace will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That the Bible tells me that God is looking to and fro throughout the whole earth looking to show himself strong on behalf of somebody, those whose hearts are steady on him. He will keep at perfect peace if your mind stays on the Lord. So you got all these promises. Those are like four, right? There's thousands and thousands and thousands of promises for the Christian to have the life that Jesus said, I come that you might have life and then more abundantly. I know I just preached a lot, but I have a lot to say right there. Okay, that's out. You're like, I don't know what he just said. It's live streamed. You can listen to it again. Those are yours. Your response to those will determine your level of receiving them. They went out and murmured and complained and doubted and came up to the promised land right where God was ready to take them into the land of flowing with milk and honey, and they died on the side of the Jordan in the wilderness. Promises. Christians, we're missing out on the promises of God that are yes and amen in Christ, but you must walk in the premise of the promise. You must respond to it right now. It's a challenge for the church to respond. It's called, one guy calls it the satanic lullaby that Satan sings to the church. I'm okay, you're okay, we'll just stay the way we are. Just stay in your seat. Don't, don't jump. Don't, don't move. Don't, don't, don't be moved by God. Don't, don't re, re, react. Don't, don't respond. Don't, don't get out of your flow. Don't, don't, don't get out of your routine. Don't get out of your tradition and your religion. There, there's a satanic lullaby that would love the church to just be happy and complacent right where it's at. Anybody got enough, Jesus, that you're done? Anybody got enough of the Holy Spirit? Anybody got enough of the promises? It's like, not me. The Bible says, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. You know why I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit? I'm a crack pot, man. I'm like leaking, fills me up, and then it leaks out, and fills me up, and it leaks out. I got to be being filled with the Holy Spirit. This is not an accidental accomplishment. This is intentional. And I know for a lot of us, it's easy to tap out instead of tapping in. It's easy to tap out instead of tapping in. I pray that today might be the day that you say, it's time to tap back in and, 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 and fighting for my marriage. There's an enemy. That's why the king came to Elisha. There's an enemy coming against him. And he's like, I need victory. I need, anybody ever get victory and then defeat? Victory and then defeat? And you get sick and tired of tapping in. You're like, okay, I'm done. I'm tapping out. I'm, I'm done trying today's the day that you, you tap back in and you, and you keep tapping. You keep walking. You keep pursuing. If you fight as a Christian, you win. When you stop fighting in a Christ, as a Christian, you lose. If you'll keep fighting for your marriage, you win. If you, keep, if, you, if you keep fighting for your children, there's victory in Christ by persisting in the battle. I'm at peace, and this is a statement I have with one of my pastors here in Oregon. I'm at peace because I'm at war. And I think of King David. He fought and fought and had all these victories. And then the, year that, the time of year that kings go out to war, David's like, I've done enough war. I've done enough battle. 
I've done enough. I'm gonna, it's time for kings to go to war. I'm going to stay home. I'm going to skip this battle. And you would think that David's big struggles were when he was 20, when he was 18, when he was 30. David and Bathsheba happened when he was 50. Two-thirds of the men of the Bible failed greatest in the last third of their life. You're not getting further from your biggest failure. You're potentially getting closer. You're getting closer to the retirement. When people retire spiritually, I can leave you a laundry list if you want. There's no place for you to say today's a day off spiritually. Today's a day to keep tapping. Keep tapping into the power of God and the person of God and the presence of God and the purposes of God and the promises of God and keep walking in them to keep faithful in the things that he's called us to. Amen? All right. You ever uh, been at a sporting event, something that was celebratory with a bump on the log? And they're like, what am I even here for? So that they kick the ball, they shoot the ball. Like, they, they don't even just rob the joy from themselves. They rob the joy from the people around them. Do you know, you, you don't just suffer yourself when you don't respond to the promises of God. Everyone around you suffers. Everybody around you suffers. This morning, it's time. It's time to tap in. It's time to tap in for your marriage. It's time to tap into God. It's time to say, no, I've been slacking, I've been off. But what I love about God is after Peter's biggest failure, he comes back and says, are you ready to go? Feed my sheep? I'm a loser. I denied you. Uh, are you ready to go? Feed my sheep? You know who get, God gets to use as losers because that's his only option? <laughs> Can I get an amen or no? Like, like, that's all he's got. I'm like, God, are you sure you want to use me? He's like, sure. I'm like, all right, we'll do this again. You only got one option. You're it. So let's go. Tap in. And if you've been just tapping out, I want to encourage you to respond. Maybe it's today, maybe it's right now, to just, just make a moment of response and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I'm missing the promises that you've bled and died so that I can have. I'm missing out on those blessings that you provided for me, and all i got to do is just walk in them. I'm tapping out, and I need to tap in. I'm going to ask for a response. If you're, if you're in a spot where you say, man, I need to, I need to respond. If you're in a place where I, I just need to respond, I just want to encourage you in this next minute or two, just come forward. We'll have people up here, but that, and it's not about people coming up here. It's about all of you who feel like, I mean, before, this is the way that the guy that preaches wants to move people. He says, has anybody got areas of your life that you've tapped out? Nobody? Nobody? Nobody's got an area. Nobody wants to respond. So if you know that there's areas, now it's the opportunity to respond. You're like, you just guilt tripped us and do it. You tricked us. So well, now we'll know that the ones that don't respond. <laughs> but the reality is, your lack of response is proof. Last statement. Jesus met this wee little man named Zacchaeus in the sycamore tree. And Zacchaeus says, Jesus, if I've wronged anybody, I'm paying them back. If, if I've done wrong, I'm paying back. And, and Jesus says, surely salvation has come to this man. Was it about him, his works that got him salvation? No, Jesus said his response to me has proved his belief. Has proved his, his belief of the promise. Your response is only proof of your level of belief. If you want to come forward, now would be a good time to come forward. We're just going to pray over you. It won't be anything weird. Uh, you don't have to 
spill any blood. Jesus already spilled the blood. But if you want to come forward, if you need to tap back in for your marriage, tap back in for your children, tap back in for your, 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 your friends, tap back into God, the, the relationship with God, you're like, I don't have time for God. I've tapped out on a lot of things. I, I'm just fine sitting on the sidelines. I'm fine missing the promises of God in my life. I'm, I'm okay. I don't need the promised land. I know G, God's called me to great and precious promises. I know he's called me to joy and the joy of the Lord would be my strength. I know that he's called me to have peace that passes all understanding. I, and I, I don't have it and I want it, but I, I don't want to tap back in and I don't want to respond. And, and it's, you don't have to respond, but you're welcome to respond. If you want to come forward, the worship team's going to, it's going to play for a minute. You're welcome to come forward during this time. I'm just going to pray over you guys. You can pray for each other. And, and today, start tapping. And I, I, I tell you this, you don't need any more promises. You're not like, oh, if I had a better promise, I'd have a better response. You just need to re remember your, the promises that you've been given, amen? amen? You've been given the great and precious promises of eternal life. You've been given the joy. You've been given the presence of the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the grave is at work in you. You're like, I'm not experiencing. Are you tapping in? Or you often test tapping out. I don't have time for this. I don't have time to pray without ceasing. I don't have time for the things of the kingdom. If it's time to tap in, I want to encourage you to come forth.